come out to a spot that's 65 meters deep so not really ideal for stray lining but definitely good for dropper rigging and i'm putting a bait down here on this reef there's a bit of sign there we're using black magic circle hooks so um obviously we just let the fish hook themselves there's the weight yep yep got it whoa <laughs> didn't expect that this is quite decent so i've hooked a real real fish here it's a long way up from 65 meters He's taking some good runs. I don't know what it is. I haven't felt any tail beats, but I haven't felt any head shakes either. That so could be absolutely anything. And that is one of the things with a, a pattern oster or dropper rig in deep water. They will catch a variety of species. Oh, I see some color down there. Oh, you're never gonna guess what it is. Except for sliding up to the net. Pretty tired from being wound up from the depth. There we go. Got it. Happy with that one. So when I get home, I'll uh, show you how we tie up our Paternoster on dropper rigs. You don't need a lot of equipment for tying a Paternoster rig, but what you do need is a good sharp knife or a multi-tool, very handy. The correct weight of monofilament leader or fluorocarbon, depending on what you want to use. Choice is yours. A selection of hooks in different sizes, swivels, and obviously sinkers. Now sinkers for Paternoster rigs are always at the bottom of the rig, so it pays to use a teardrop or boat type sinker that has a loop eye. Makes it easy to attach to your rig. So the choice of leader is very important when you're tying a dropper rig because it denotes how stiff your dropper loop's gonna be, but also depending on the species that you're chasing, you wanna make sure that you're not gonna get bitten through. So it pays to go a little bit heavier than you think you need when you're tying up dropper rigs or Paternoster rigs. If you're fishing for small bait fish or small table fish, whiting, garfish, that sort of thing, you can use fairly light sort of leaders. With the larger table fish, bigger snapper, cod, things like that, you probably need to go up 40 pounds, 60 pounds, even 80 pounds if the fish are large. And when you're chasing those really big fish, kingfish, groper, blue eye, blue nose, you want to go heavy, anything from 100 pound, maybe even up to as heavy as 200 pound in your droppers. Very heavy, but good security when you're tying them up. Hook selection is pretty important when you're setting up a Paternoster rig. What you want to make sure is that the hooks that you use are suitable for the style of fishing you're doing. When fishing in deep water for large fish, you want to use a heavy duty thick gauge hook, something like the Wasabi half hooker hook. As you scale down your tackle, you can go to lighter style hooks, such as the KL series or the KLTs. In most situations, a circle hook is the best choice. Sometimes you might want to use a J hook or suicide hook as they're known. These are good when you're strike fishing in shallow water. The other hook that comes in really handy when Paternoster rig fishing is the bait holder hook. This is particularly good for smaller species such as whiting and flathead, especially when you're using small baits that are easily torn off the hook. To tie a dropper loop, select your line and then stretch it out and warm it up a bit. This makes it nice and straight and easy to form your knot. Form a loop the size that you want your dropper to be. Take the two pieces of line and twist them, leaving a hole in the centre part to pass the main part of your dropper loop through. Pass it through and then carefully pull it up. Now the only way to do this easily is with your mouth. Just grab the loop and pull it and then slowly wet and tighten your knot. It's that simple practice this knot can be tied in seconds. Always check your knots after you've tied them, make sure the loop's not too long or too short and then just make sure the mono hasn't got any damage to it. So I'll take you through the construction of a Paternoster rig. It is fairly simple but like I say there's a few tips to make it really work. So get your leader and you'll need it a little bit more than you actually think. So what I do is leave it on the spool and tie as I go and then cut it off at the end. That way you don't have any wastefulness. So first of all, allow enough for your sinker drop. Then get your first loop, which will be your bottom loop. And when you're forming your loop, get double the amount of line that you need, obviously, for the length of your loop. Then just fold the leader over itself. Get your loop nice and tidy. Then rotate the two pieces of mono that you're in your fingers. Rotate that seven to nine times, leaving a loop in the middle. Then get the large part of your dropper loop, put that through the open loop in the middle of your twisted leader. And there's no easy way to do this. The easy way is to put it in your mouth and pull it through. Then draw it close, wet your knots as always. 
and then slowly draw it, don't draw it fast, draw it slowly until it forms your loop. So there's one loop, that's a nice short loop and see how it's nice and rigid and sticking out from the side so it's not going to get caught around when you put a hook on it. So that's one loop. You can use up to three, four loops if you want to, but most people use two. Now leave a good distance to your second loop. Repeat the process. Fold it over, get your two pieces of line and rotate those. Pull the bottom loop through. Wet your knot, slowly draw it up. And there you have your second loop. Now notice the distance between the two loops is quite a long way. Now the reason you do this is firstly so that when you're putting your baits in the water they don't tangle up. If you've got longer loops and, are, and the distance between them is not enough they can tangle up quite easily. Also if you get two decent fish you don't want them bashing on each other either. So keep your loops quite well apart so they won't tangle and the fish that you hook on them won't get caught up. The third part is to take another probably uh, 20, 30 centimetres and that's where you're going to tie your swivel. Cut your line, tie your swivel on using a uni knot, it's a very well known knot and it's very reliable. So swivels eliminate any twists that might go into your leader. Again wet your knot, draw it up and then trim off your tag end there. So this is the end that you attach to your rod or to your fishing line. To complete your Paternoster or dropper rig, tie a large loop at the bottom of the rig using a double overhand knot. Make the loop nice and big so you can loop sinkers through it easily. On the completed rig, the stiff branch of the dropper makes sure that the hook sits well away from the backbone of the rig. Some fish really respond to a bit of bling on your uh, dropper rigs or your paternoster rigs. So some luminous tubing is really good. It also stiffens up your rig, stops it from tangling. Luminous beads at the end by your hook really attracts. That gives those fish uh, a target point to attack your bait. Works really well with fish like Gurnard, Cherokee, Morwong, all that sort of stuff. Really, really good. When I'm baiting my paternoster rigs, I like to not choke my hook with bait so I don't over bait it. And generally I just hook it up once leave it there. The circle hook will do the rest. Then all that's left to do is tie this onto your rod, bait it up and drop it over the side and start fishing.